שלום. My name is Amichaye Evan Israel. I am a chief editor at the Steinzel Center and teaching and lecturing about Hasidut. Today, we are going to talk about Simchat Torah, the holiday of Simchat Torah, and specifically to deal with the question, how is it possible for us to be learning, learning Torah from a sealed book, from a sealed Sefer Torah? We live in a very special time, in a very special era, some will say. As COVID entered our lives, not too long ago, and changed it completely. As we approach the high holidays of the month of Tishrei, the beginning of the new Jewish year, the way we are going to celebrate the high holidays this year is probably going to be very different from any other year. As we speak right now, we don't even know how exactly will our Simcha Torah look like, our Rosh Hashanah look like, what exactly we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do, and what will not be possible. And this is a good time to contemplate and think about the meaning of a holiday. And when we think about the high holidays, and holidays in general, we see that holidays are built and are compelled of a, of a few realms, of a few layers, a few levels. We have the ceremonies, the way we celebrate each specific holiday with its specific ceremonies, dipping the apple in honey, blowing the shofar, reading the Megillah, etc., etc. We have our tefillot, the way we daven at each and every holiday. We have the communal and family meals, festive meals, and we have the core. We have the core of the holiday. And all the other circles, all the other parts building this structure of a holiday are stemming from this core, the core of the holiday. This year, as we are going to celebrate the high holidays probably in a different way, it's a time to take a closer look at the core of the holiday, to check and see what is the meaning behind and underneath all the ceremonies and tefillot and even the meals, because all are part and all are influenced by the core of the holiday. And maybe this is one of the upsides of the COVID. Maybe, you know, this gives us the opportunity to focus on what really matters. Because many times, even in a holiday, even in a very important holiday, like the high holidays of the month of Tishrei, as we focus and as we deal with so many different things, and the ceremonies, and the tefillot, and the meals and the family and everything that has to do with it, sometimes we don't give enough thought to what really matters, to the core of the holiday. So COVID is also an opportunity, an opportunity to stay focused and think about what's the main thing here, what's the point, what's lying underneath it all. So we are talking about Simcha Torah. Simcha Torah is an interesting holiday um, as 
שמחת תורה is celebrated in ארץ ישראל at the same day of שמיני עצרת, the last day of Sukkot, and in חוץ לארץ we celebrate שמיני עצרת the first day and שמחת תורה on the second day. But what we have in the Torah, in the written Torah, we have only the holiday of Shmini Atzeret. Shmini Atzeret is the eighth day of Sukkot. It's the final holiday sealing Sukkot and the entire month of holiday. And later on, when the custom of Kriyat Torah was made by Ezra Sofer, initially by Moshe Rabbeinu, and later on with the specific orders that it takes. And we started reading Torah each and every week on Shabbat and having a cycle in which we finish reading the whole Torah throughout the year. Chachamim made this holiday, Shmini Atzeret, to be also the holiday of Simchat Torah the day that we finish, we finish reading the Torah, we finish this cycle of reading the Torah, and it's the time we start from a new, we start from the beginning of Torah, right after we read the parasha of Vezot Abracha, the final parasha of Sefer HaTorah, we start reading from Bereshit, the first parasha opening the new cycle, opening the Torah. How do we celebrate Simchat Torah? Simchat Torah is celebrated everywhere by hakafot, mainly by the hakafot. We have, we have special davening, we have special reading in the Torah. As we said, we finish the Torah, we start the Torah anew. But what's the main ceremony? of Simchat Torah, that's the Hakafot, dancing with the Sefer Torah. We have the Hakafot at night, we have the Hakafot at the day. In Chutz La'aret, there is a difference between the first day, Shmini Atzeret, and the second day, Simchat Torah. And of course, each and every community has its own customs and own ceremonies, specifically how to celebrate this holiday. But everybody, including everybody, is dancing with the Torah. And dancing with the Torah is the main part of Simchat Torah. This year, we're not sure if we can dance with the Torah. Who can hold the Torah? Will anyone be able to hold the Torah? Just a few people? We're used to kids dancing and enjoying on the shoulders of their parents, kissing the Torah. Most likely this year will be at least a bit different. And this is a time, this is an opportunity to dive into the meaning of Simchat Torah and see what is the meaning of Simchat Torah. What is the core of Simchat Torah? What stands behind the custom of dancing with the Torah? As we think about it, Simchat Torah is the day that we mark the end of the cycle of Torah reading. What is Torah reading? Torah reading is Torah reading. We read the Torah every week. We read the Parsha. And I think that in the last couple years, maybe a, a bit more than that, the Parsha has a whole new renewal. People learn parsha. People talk about the parsha. People live with the parsha, and parsha is all about reading it, reading it, learning it, learning it in depth, contemplating, thinking. What could the parsha tell me? What is the message that the, this parsha carries for this week, for me, for us? And therefore. It's quite odd that the way to celebrate the end of this cycle is by dancing. And not just dancing, but dancing with a sealed book, with a sealed Sefer Torah. 
as we hold the Sefer Torah on Simchat Torah, the Sefer Torah is closed. It's inside its garments, its box, and the different Sifrei Torah that we have. How come? Why don't we mark Simchat Torah by a day that is dedicated to learning the Torah? Learning the, the last parasha, parasha Gezot Abarcha, in depth. 24 hours of lectures and shiurim everywhere. Let's do a second Shavuot, right? A time of learning. A time of looking inside this special book that we got and learning it. But no, that's not the way we mark it. The way we do it is we take the Sefer Torah, we close it, and we dance with it. We, we have an extreme joy, but not a joy of learning, not a joy of reading, the joy of dancing, dancing with a sealed Sefer Torah. So what does that mean? What's the meaning of dancing with a sealed Sefer Torah? How come this is the way we mark the end of the Torah reading cycle? And the answer is that by learning the Torah, we have indeed what is usually taken as the main part of the Torah, which is the learning. The Torah is called your wisdom. So it is something that we learn, that we take a deeper look in order to learn it and understand it. But there is more to that. Our connection to the Torah as a nation and as individuals is much deeper than just the learning and understanding of the Torah. Our connection to the Torah is an inner connection that each and every one of us, and it doesn't really matter who he is, each and every one who is part of Am Yisrael is connected to the Torah connected to the Torah in a way that it doesn't matter if he opens the Torah, if he reads the Torah, if he knows the Torah, and how knowledgeable he is. It doesn't really matter. He's connected, and the Torah is his. It's part of him. It's part of his identity. And in that sense, in this connection, special connection, inner connection, that each and every one of us has to the Torah, there are no differences between one person and another. When we open the Torah, right away, when we open the Torah, the differences show up. Because when you open the Torah, there is a, per there is a person who knows how to read it. And there is a person who doesn't even know how to read it. He doesn't know the Hebrew alphabet. There is a person who is very knowledgeable and learned the Torah this entire year, each and every week, in depth, with all the commentaries that were made on this Parsha. And there is a person who doesn't even know what is a Parsha. There is a person who did not learn, a person who maybe doesn't even want to learn. That's when we open the Torah. When we open the Torah, when we start learning it, there are so many differences between us, the way we learn, how much we learn, if we learn. But when the Torah school, when the Sefer Torah is sealed, there are no differences. The connection, the relationship that we have to the Torah is all the same. It's all the same by all of us. All of us share the same Torah and all of us connect to the same Torah. It's ours, whether we learned it whether we still did not, whether we know a lot or we know a bit less than that. This idea of the inner connection to the Sefer Torah, the inner connection of Am Yisrael to the Torah, which is demonstrated by dancing with a sealed Sefer Torah, is mentioned in the final, the last parasha of the Sefer Torah, Parashat Vezot Abracha, which we read on the day of Simcha Torah. Parashat Vezot Abracha, a very, very short parasha, 52 psukim, 
that's all, has the final words of Moshe Rabbeinu before his passing, has its blessings to, the, to all Am Yisrael and to each and every Shevet in specific. And one of the Psukim that is mentioned there in the parasha, and which is a very important Pasuk, is the Pasuk, Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe, Morasha Kehilat Yaakov. The Torah that was given to us by Moshe is an inheritance to the people of Israel. The Torah here, and this specific pasuk, is called inheritance. What is spe so special about inheritance? When a person dies and his descendants inherit It's, an, it's automatic. They inherit whatever there is automatically. Now it's their choice and it's up to them to decide whether they want to take this inheritance, whether they want to use it, whether they don't want to use it, how will they use it? That's their own choice. But having this inheritance, accepting this inheritance is automatic. The same thing with the Torah. Our connection to the Torah is, in a way, automatic. It's sort of genetic. You're a Jew, you're connected. The Torah is yours. And again, the differences will make a difference. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you wear, it doesn't matter where you feel that you belong, in which community defines you, how do you define your Jewish identity, it doesn't matter. The connection to the Torah is to all of our people in the same way, in the same exact way. It's an inheritance to all of us. It's an inheritance that belongs to each and every one of us. And this is what we do when we dance in Simchat Torah, when we dance in Simchat Torah, and specifically we dance with the sealed Sifrei Torah, we dance with this message. We dance with this me message. The Torah belongs to me. The Torah belongs to each and every one of us, and it doesn't matter how much he knows from the Torah and how much he learned from this Torah or how much will he learn from this Torah. The Torah is us. The Torah is part of our identity. These days, this time, is the time that me specifically, and I think many, mark the a few weeks from the passing of my father, Ravadin Steinzatz Evan Israel. When I think about Simchat Torah, when I think about this message of Torah Tziva Lanu Moshe Morasha Kihilat Yaakov, the way the Torah belongs to each and every one of us, I think that this was the core of motivation of my father's life, my father's legacy, and my father's work all these years. My father put his life and all his efforts, and he really put entirely himself in this work to make accessible each part of the Torah, starting from the Talmud, the Tanakh, Mishnah, Rambam, Chassidut teachings like the Tanya, to be accessible to each and every Jew. That each and every person from our people will be able to open the book, read it, connect to it, and understand it. The Torah does not belong to one sector of Am Yisrael, to a group in Am Yisrael. 
people that wear beards or yarmulke are not the owners of the Torah because the owners of the Torah are each and every one of us. Each and every one of Am Yisrael is the owner of the Torah. The Torah is an inheritance of each and every one of us. And with all the differences that we have among us, and we have some differences, and we have different communities and different identities and different ways that we define ourselves and define our Jewish identity, the Torah is ours. And my father's life mission was exactly this, that each owner of the Torah will be able to open it, will be able to take what he wants from the Torah and what he can take from the Torah. What will he do with that? That's his own choice. Whether you want to learn a lot or not too much, whether you want to adapt what it says or you still do not, that's up to you. But the Torah is yours, and by my father's work, it's also accessible to each and every one. I would like to share with you a short passage from my father's writings about the holiday of, of Sukkot and Simchat Torah, explaining and giving another angle, another point of view to the dancing. What is dance? In a dance, the people who dance join together, and no one is left by himself. The melody manifests or obscure and envelops and unifies everyone. The dancers kick the earth so as to ascend heavenward again and again. The dancer strikes at the lower part of the world because he does not want to be there. He wants to elevate himself above the surface of the ground. This is another point of view. What is dancing? What is, what is the meaning of dancing? Dancing is, on the one hand, something that unifies everyone who dances around. And on the other hand, dancing, the way it's done, is the way we declare we want to elevate ourselves. We want to be, we want to get higher and higher. So in this Simchat Torah, no matter how we're going to celebrate it, we have to remember this message of Simchat Torah. And the message of Simchat Torah is, whether physically dancing with the Sefer Torah or just spiritually dancing with the Sefer Torah, the message is one. The Torah is yours, and it doesn't matter who you are. If you're part of this nation, you're part of this people, the Torah is yours. The Torah is yours to use, to do what you want with it. And the dance reminds us that there, is no, there are no differences between us regarding the connection to the Torah. And the dance reminds us, as we just read, that we're all one and we all have the same goal to elevate and to go higher and higher. Thank you.